Good morning. I'm not surprised that he's playing well. I mean, because we've, you know, he's been here a while and we've worked with him. So you, you have a chance, I think, to uh, really evaluate a guy because we give so many equal reps to all the quarterbacks. We've seen a lot of Jacoby and Drake even when Sam was here. So I, I just think, I'm, look, I'm thinking back to when we were recruiting him and I went and watched him in, uh, in the regular season and watched him play live. You know, he was always listed as a pro-style quarterback. And the first thing that I noticed the first time I ever saw him live, and I've said this numerous times, but I just was very impressed with his mobility. And I didn't think anybody really gave him enough credit for, you know, how well he throws on the run and how he extends plays with his athletic ability. And, you know, that's, to me, he can make all the throws on the field. He's really, really good mentally, the competitive aspect to, to Drake helps him and then you you know you 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 add the fact that he can extend plays and do some of those things and uh, can you ever predict somebody's going to be as as uh, as prolific as he's been no you you hope they all play that way but uh, there's nothing there's no limitations in the resources Drake has that would make me feel like he couldn't do some of the things he's doing so I am most happy with Ross his progress every week you know, and I said the same thing about Sam. In this offense, they have, you know, we're much simpler, so they don't have a lot to think about, but they still think about and have more to do than the other positions. And so where progress can be made at quarterback in this system is mentally. And Drake just keeps getting better each week. You notice he's not leaping anymore. He protected the ball on Saturday. Um, he's sliding more. Uh, he's not holding the ball as long. His feet weren't as busy in this game. So all of these things are things I brought up with regards to uh, areas that we want to improve at with Drake. And all of those areas have continually gotten better. And I just think it's because that's you, you get from him what you emphasize, and he's, he wants to be better. So he's always interested in knowing what the weak link is. And then that's what we address. So I would say I agree with what you just said there. Is I, he does not ever let one play affect the next one. You know, and, and I've said this before too, but Coach Brown always says don't let one loss of, you know, cost you twice, right? And, we, and that's exactly the way we, we see it from play to play. And that's with every position, but at quarterback particularly, you don't want the, the negative on the last play to affect the next play. And I think he does a phenomenal job, even in practice, if we have an errant throw or a, a misread or something, his mind's on the next play. And the best way to erase a bad play is to execute on the next one. And so he does a really good job of that. I, I, you know, I wear them out with that. I do. Every play is its own world. I must say that every single day. And, but we, we're addressing it that way. I think our guys lock in that way. Um, You've also heard me say I, it, it's, it's very difficult for a human being to do something consistently for 80 straight reps. And that is the biggest challenge, in my opinion, that quarterbacks at the college or the pro level have is being consistently efficient making decisions. You know, it's, with Drake, it's less about can he athletically do what we need to do to be successful on the play because he can run and he can make all the throws and he can throw on the run and it's it's making good decisions to put the ball in the right spot or put himself in the right spot and the better we get there the more he's able to just to display what he can do athletically because we're you know we're in a good situation on the play if he's making good decisions you know and we ask that of all the players but he touches the ball every play and he's going to impact every play and he's had some things that he'd like to have back there's plays I wish we got back with him 
some turnover plays, some missed decisions early on. You know, but again, he's not, you know, like Sam had, and I refer to him just because he played right away as a true freshman. He had, he had a very small body of work here, just a spring ball and a camp. Drake has been here for a while. He's seen corner crash. He's seen safety pressure. He's seen, you know, bear and mint and the twist game and all that stuff. He's seen the different pressures. So this is not his first rodeo with regards to running this offense and seeing the, the different things that you see defensively. So I, w I would have expected him to maybe react a little quicker and a little more like he's been there than Sam had an opportunity to because Sam didn't get that advantage. Um, but those things have dissipated, and we have been eliminating or minimizing the number of mistakes at the QB spot each week. And so that just needs to continue. We've got, you know, we've got the, this, this, this last leg of the season against some good teams, and so he's going to need to continue to improve doing that stuff. But it's been really fun watching him progress this, this year. Yeah, I, I do. I'm laughing because Dre Bly and I went to see Drake play basketball. And it was 52-7 to 7 at the half. I picked the worst possible game to go watch. <laughs> and I won't embarrass the high school by talking about who it was, but it was a really bad. Drake didn't play in the second half, and he drained just about everything he shot. And it was, it was like I, I might as well just go and watch him warm up, really. But I did watch him play. I know he's very good. Um, I don't know this. I'm not on the basketball staff, but I suspect he could probably play basketball here. And uh, when, when the players, your teammates, have the level of respect for somebody playing another, like if you talk to somebody here who's played with or seen Drake play basketball, that's a teammate, they rave about how good he is. And so when you have the respect of other players and other athletes, you could pretty much bank on the fact that he's probably a pretty good basketball player. So I, I am, um, I'm certainly not going to play him one-on-one, -on -one and I think, you know, um, and I hope he doesn't think about playing basketball because right now he's doing a heck of a job doing what he's doing. How helpful is it to see a guy in a different sport? It is good because you can see his feet, you can see his hands, and sometimes in basketball you can see how twitchy they are. And um, Usually if I go see a quarterback play basketball, I, you like to watch the athleticism, but – you know, the eye-hand coordination with his shooting ability. But I always like to watch him on defense. I'm just curious as to how mentally tough they are and how aggressive they're going to be defensively. You know what I mean? Because I think it takes some toughness, both physical and mental, to play the position. And you can usually see some of that. Playing defense in basketball is a little bit revealing sometimes. His recruitment, um, what do you think it was that allowed you to play from Alabama? Oh, I don't know. You'd have to ask Drake. I think he was born to play at North Carolina. Mac told him so. I told him so. He winds up here. I don't know why he did. I just think, um, you know, he, he's alluded to some things. I would ask him. Well, I, I will say this. I will say this. Drake has said um, the interest level increased when Coach Brown and the new staff came in and the new offense and the just, you know, the initial – success that we were having was a little bit different, I guess, than winning five games in two years. And so he did say that that changed some things for him. But um, as far as the actual reason, you'd, you'd have to ask him. It's not really something we've talked about much. The day I remember is just when he said he was coming here. And that's, that's about all I needed to hear was that he's coming here to be a Tar Heel. Did you ever give up? Did you ever give up in that? Absolutely not. No, and when he called Coach Brown about committing to Alabama, I think Coach said, yeah, that's, that's fine. We're, we're going to keep recruiting you. <laughs> and, 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 oh, by the way, you're going to be coming to North Carolina. You know, it was, I really think that's how the conversation went. And I think Matt could tell you the same thing. I, I think it's a little of everything. I mean, he's really flexible. He's really athletic. Um, for a longer-armed quarterback, he, he can get the ball off really quickly. And I think uh, he has the ability to, risk, to make some wrist throws 
which helps you in off-platform stuff. I think he has the ability to torque and, and get around so they can get himself in position. The, the scramble to the left off our mesh play Saturday night, you know, where he hit uh, Drake rolling, I mean, uh, hit uh, Antoine Green rolling left, that turned into a, an explosive pass play, and that was all his ability to throw off platform. Um, I think some of it's natural. I think some of it comes from the things that he has been asked to do on the court in the sport of basketball. I think um, some of it is he works on it, and we, we work on off-platform throwing every day. So I think it's a combination of all of that. But at the end of the day, Drake's an athlete, and it's just something that he does well. And um, Again, I don't – I think he's Patrick Mahomes-esque in, in the, the things that he can do because of – how uh, capable he is on the move and, and off platform. Max said that with the attention you guys are getting with Drake's generating and the way he's playing, you've got some kids call you back from recruiting to ever maybe start looking elsewhere. And obviously, you can't speak about specifics, but are you experiencing that, especially yourself, because that's the offense that he probably looks the offense of kids? Well, in a, on, a, on, a, on a broader sense, I think when you're winning, players tend to call you back. I think. Um, when you have a quarterback like Drake is and the way he's playing right now, you know, when I have a quarterback like Drake and he's playing the way he is, I think um, particularly on the offensive side, particularly at the skill positions, you, you've got some guys that are looking at the points and the yards and the wins and the uh, caliber of quarterbacks that we actually have here. And I think, uh, yeah, I, I think it generates some more interest from guys that uh, you might have felt like we're looking elsewhere. At the end of the day, and I, I believe Coach Brown will tell you the same thing also, he really doesn't care, nor do I, how good a kid is. If he doesn't have a, a burning desire to come here, then you just you let him move on because otherwise they're going to look at the grass as green on the other side anyway. And so you just want kids that are dying to be here at the end of the day, particularly a quarterback. Recruiting quarterbacks for me, I don't chase anyone. I just had a really good conversation with a quarterback and his family yesterday and and I told him, I said, I am not, I'm not going to chase you. If, if I've got to convince you to come here, you're the wrong guy. you got to come here because you love this place and you can see yourself here and you want to run this offense and you want to play at the school. You know, and and uh, I, I think that's how we feel at every position. But I, I just – I have no interest in trying to convince somebody that this is – and I don't know that this is the best place. They have to decide that. But the guys that want to be here that are, are going to think about nothing but – getting better while they're here, those are the guys that are going to be successful when they come here. That said, without getting obviously into specifics, have you been kind of surprised by the couple of kids that maybe have called back that you really have to see? Uh, I, I think the guys that are showing greater interest now that maybe weren't before, you, 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 you kind of knew they were, you know, they're in that gray area. They're just trying to decide and look around who's best for them. And again, as you're winning and things are going well, as an offensive player, you you know you're going to be a little bit more interested. If you're a receiver and we're throwing the ball. Why wouldn't you be interested? If you're a running back and you're running the ball, why would it not generate more interest? Uh, if you're a tight end, if ever you know uh, you're going to be interested in North Carolina, it would be now because we're using them more now than we ever have. So, you know, from an offensive line standpoint, I think it uh, it is a great. Uh, you can put up a really nice video resume as an offensive lineman here because we throw screens, we're throwing the ball, we run the football, we play in space. You're, we're asking offensive linemen to do a little everything, so you, it gives them an opportunity really to display how versatile they can be as an offensive lineman, which obviously is helpful when you have scouts looking at you. So I think the way we're playing right now and the offense that we're in helps, helps recruiting. Yeah. Um, just like, what are you seeing as you're, you're digging into them? Uh, they're very good defensively. They uh, they play well together. You know, some of that's coach speak. But, I mean, they do. They they kind of they fit the run up together. Um, they play a multiple. Uh, they may play multiple coverages now. So they're they will play some man. They'll play some zone. They're going to be in two high. They're going to be in one high. So I think uh, different than maybe uh, different than three of the last four games. They're they're going to be. Uh, they're going to show us different pictures from a coverage standpoint. And, um, and, and the guys are pretty good at what they do, and they understand their scheme. Uh, the picture is not going to be the same from one, one to the next. They're not as big a pressure team as maybe what we saw last week. I don't know how you would be. 
Um, but when they pressure, it's effective. I, this one is a little bit more of a mental challenge, I think, in terms of uh, when and where we're throwing the football. Um, and then, you know, up front, they give you the same thing. You're, there's a little bit of mint, and there's a little bit of odd, and there's some bear, and, and then they get in some oddball fronts, and they'll, they'll base everything out of their four down. But they give you enough of everything else that you have to work against everything, and you've got to be prepared from an assignment standpoint against everything. So this week, you know, maybe uh, probably the biggest concern after just looking at them last night and this morning is a little bit of the multiplicity that they have schematically. No, in the RPO game, it doesn't matter what covers they're in. If they're open, they're open. If they're open, we're throwing it. If not, we're going to run the football. That's, that's actually probably the, the one area that helps us against a team like this is there's no more thinking with regards to throwing the RPOs. But from a coverage standpoint, you know, receivers are, you know, they're going to run some things a certain way based on what you do from a coverage standpoint. And there's more of those situations uh, because of the library of coverages that they have. And then up front, you know, you – if you're going to sit in one front, we know how to block that. If you're going to play three or four from down to down, you have to make assignment adjustments and, and understand, hey, I've got mint this time. Here's how I'm going to block you know, whatever play I'm running as opposed to if it's a four down front or if it's a, a pure three down front. So we just have to be sharp mentally from down to down with regards to what they're running on that particular play so that we can address it appropriately. So the, the one thing that you can, you can see with this defense, not just in the red zone, but th throughout anywhere on the field, all the field zone, they don't give up a lot of explosives. You know, and they, it, it, it's a, you know, for lack of a better way of putting it, I guess it's a, a bend but don't break deal. Maybe, maybe, uh, maybe I would say they, they keep everything in front of them. They're going to make you earn it. Drives are probably going to be longer when you're scoring them. Being able to take that one shot going deep, they will. They defend themselves. They guard against that stuff, um, and they're going to force you to put more, uh, more successful plays, stack them together, and, and and put a drive together as opposed to giving up the one shot for six points. So I think when you get something against their defense, they're going to make you earn it. Um, that's one of the first things that we notice. And then when you get down to the red zone, obviously the field is much shorter. So you can't stretch them vertically to create space. And so the way that they play defense from a philosophical standpoint, at least the way that we see it, it's, it's very conducive to the way they play down in the red zone now because you're, you're losing space and you cannot stretch them vertically. So there's, there's less grass. The, the, the throwing lanes are smaller. People can get to the, to the box and the line of scrimmage quicker in the run game. And I just think because that's the way they do things throughout the entire field, it's, it, it lends to them being more successful when the field is restricted. Is there any players that out on the defense You know, last week I, there were three, you know, at, at Pitt I thought that were just game changers. I don't know that I would say – I'm really impressed with the corners. You know, I think uh, three is long and rangy and, and physical. And I think 23 can flat out run. Um, and uh, what, right or wrong, it's my opinion that the, the combo of corners that we're going to see at Virginia are as good as – it's as good of a duo as we've seen this year. So I have a lot of respect for – I, I have a lot of respect for all of them. But, I mean, if you say something that stands out to me right now, I think that their corners are, are, are really, really good football players. Well, th those are the things that Pittsburgh forced us to do um, because they had seven and a half to eight people in the box all the time. You know, they always have seven, and they're trying to get that eighth there, depending on what you do. Sometimes he's there faster than others, than other plays. And, and uh, they, Pittsburgh was going to force you to throw the football. If you're going to beat them, you've got to be able to throw the football. What we didn't want to do is abandon the run game, so we didn't. 
Um, and, you know, we used, we used uh, Drake a little bit and we used the running backs a little bit, but we threw some swings and some quick hitters and, and some screens. And that was our run game against Pittsburgh because that's what they gave you. And I think, um, you know, throwing a bubble screen or a now screen or, you know, a, a, you know, a, a, a slicer or sting or something to the receivers or a swing throw to us, that's just – all that is is a, a perimeter run game to us. That's actually how we evaluate in the offseason. You know, so that stuff is going to go in our perimeter run attack. And Pittsburgh really forced you to do that in an effort to get the running backs the ball. And so that's, that's the, the, uh, the route that we chose to try to get um, Elijah and some of those guys the football on the outside. And, and actually we used Josh Downs with it, you know, on a number of swings and quick hitters and just to get outside of those, the eight people that are crowding the box. Virginia is different. Uh, Virginia is not the same defense at all. And, you know, you, there'll probably have to be some more balance in this game. And I, and I just think, uh, as I alluded to before, we're going to have to know what front and covers they're in. We're going to have to have a pretty good idea pre-snap so that we can react accordingly when we're running the plays that we're running. You know, I, I didn't at the game. Um, I did. I don't always. I always watch the game, the TV version, because I look for signals and and uh, sometimes you can see calls or hey, was it really a catch? Was he really out? Like I like to see that stuff, but I never watch. Uh, I never watch the game uh, with the audio on. So, for whatever reason, Saturday night. I mean, we didn't get home until twelve thirty, one o'clock, and we had guests at the house and. They wanted to watch the game again, so the audio was on, and we watched it. I probably didn't go to sleep till about four o'clock, and I did. I heard that at the end of the game, but I did not hear that on the field while we're while we were playing. What's it seem like? All your friends are over. It's two, three a.m. Games like this. Oh, you know how they, the pool's going, the, the adrenaline's up. Yeah, there's a. Uh, yeah, we're in a good mood. We're in a good mood. It was a it was a good game. The guys played hard, right? So. We were we were up for a little while. I might have barbecued at about two o'clock in the morning. <laughs> the, the throw to Morales on the sideline, you know, I think it, you know, it was like a perfect pass. But um, is, it, is that one that sort of stands out as like, and he really can put the ball wherever he needs to? That was a, a tight space. There wasn't much room. Morales obviously dragged the foot to get in. Um, I so there's a cut up upstairs with Jacoby Criswell and Drake May. Um, and, and it's stacked on the Sams. But when they make amazing throws in practice or in the games, it goes on the cut-up. And it is a huge cut-up. So, no, I, I've seen them. They've made that throw so often, all three of them. You know, they can throw comebacks to the field, speed outs to the field. It was it a great throw? Absolutely. And, um, but he had a number of great throws in that game. And so I'm not surprised now because I'm around it every day. But we're, we're certainly – Thankful that he can make those because uh, not everybody can. Yeah, just watching it seems like such a tight window. Tight window, and Kamari did a good job of keeping his feet in and catching it. Um, but it's just become more routine now. So, you know, we've been blessed. We've had some really good quarterbacks from a character and a talent standpoint. So hopefully I can keep from screwing it up, and we'll go win another one here on Saturday. All right. Thanks, Bill. Have a good week. Thank you, Bill.